Buzz, I'm talking to you by telephone from the Oval Room at the White House. And this certainly has to be the most historic telephone call. That was the President of the United States, Richard M. Nixon, talking to astronauts Neil Armstrong and Edwin Aldrin. The time was nearing midnight in Washington on Sunday, July 20th, 1969. They were on the surface of the moon, and it was sunrise there. And now you are in Mission Control, Houston, Texas. The mission of Apollo 11, Man on the Moon, has just been completed. For the first time in weeks, it is quiet here. The television screens are dark. A few amber lights still flicker at consoles, beckoning flight controllers who have left their positions. A soft electronic hum still permeates the atmosphere to remind us that the giant is only sleeping, resting after eight days of creation. For eight days, three hours, 18 minutes, and 21 seconds, this room has reverberated to the sounds of Apollo 11. Three men, Neil Armstrong, Edwin Aldrin, and Michael Collins, turned man's dream into reality as they flew off to the moon and landed, explored, took off, and came home. This is their flight log, recorded by their own voices as they lived the mission and reported its dramatic moments in conversation with Apollo Control. Day one, July 16, 1969, 9.32 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time at the Kennedy Spaceport. 30 seconds and counting. Astronauts report it feels good, T-minus 25 seconds. 20 seconds and counting. T-minus 15 seconds, guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Tower cleared. The giant stack of the Saturn Apollo, 363 feet of gleaming white equipment being pushed up through the blue skies of Florida by the force of the first stage engine, seven and a half million pounds of thrust, sending Apollo 11 on its way toward space. The commander, Neil Armstrong, civilian, 38 years old, veteran test pilot, making his second journey into space, leaving his wife and two sons behind as he sets out on man's greatest adventure. With him, Edwin Aldrin, nickname Buzz, the lunar module pilot, a 39-year-old lieutenant colonel in the United States Air Force. Aldrin also making his second space voyage. Married, the father of three children, two sons and a daughter. The command module pilot is Michael Collins, age 38, also an Air Force lieutenant colonel going into space for the second time. The father of two young daughters and a son. We're predicting third stage shutdown at 11 minutes, 42 seconds. Velocity 25,254 feet per second. Downrange 1,400 miles now. Altitude uh, 102.8 nautical miles. Shut down. Shut down right on time. 101.4 by 103.6. Roger, shut down, and we copy 101.4 by 103.6. They are in orbit, spinning round the world at a speed of 17,000 miles an hour, at an altitude of more than 100 miles. Once around the world and halfway round again. Finally, as the spacecraft flies over the Pacific Ocean, mission control communicator Bruce McCandless talks to the crew as the third stage engine is fired a second time and they are outward bound. Apollo 11, this is Houston. Uh, slightly less than one minute to ignition and everything is go. Right here. Ignition. We confirm ignition and the thrust is go. Guidance looking good. Velocity 26,000 feet per second. Apollo 11, this is Houston at one minute. Trajectory and guidance look good and the stage is good. Over. Coming up on 27,000 feet per second. Telemetry and radar tracking both solid. Velocity 27,800 feet per second. Apollo 11, this is Houston. Thrust is good. Everything's still looking good. Roger. Up 
Apollo 11, this is Houston. We show, show cutoff and uh, we copy the numbers and now in 62. Yeah, Houston, uh, Apollo 11, that Saturn gave us a magnificent ride. With the Earth receding, growing smaller behind them, moving at a speed now of 25,000 miles an hour, the crew separates from the third stage, maneuvers, docks with and extracts the lunar module. The first day in space is nearing its end. Here is the voice of Mission Control. This is Apollo Control at 11 hours, 29 minutes into the flight of Apollo 11. We don't expect to hear a great deal more from the crew tonight uh, at about 11 hours, 20 minutes. Uh, we said goodnight to them from Mission Control. Uh, they're beginning their sleep period about two hours early. Uh, the additional time available for sleep uh, was made available by uh, deleting the mid-course correction. This is Apollo Control at 11 hours, 32 minutes. Day two, July 17th. This is Apollo Control at 22 hours, 49 minutes ground elapsed time. The crew has been awake for some time, according to the surgeon. Spacecraft communicator here in Mission Control with the green team. Bruce McCandless is standing by to make a call to the crew. He's in the process of uh, taking over from Ron Evans. Flight Director Cliff Charlesworth has uh, asked that he make a call to the crew. We're standing by for this call momentarily. Apollo 11, Apollo 11. This is Houston, over. Morning, Houston. Apollo 11. Roger, Apollo 11. Good morning. If you're interested in the morning news, I've got a summary here from PAO, over. Okay, we're all listening. Okay, from Jodrell Bank, England, via AP. Britain's big Jodrell Bank radio telescope stopped receiving signals from the Soviet Union's unmanned moonshot at 5.49 EDT today. And a spokesman said that it appeared that the Luna 15 spaceship, quote, has gone beyond the moon, unquote. Uh, another quote, we don't think it has landed set a spokesman for Sir Bernard Lovell, director of the observatory. Washington, UPI. Vice President Spiro T. Agnew has called for putting a man on Mars by the year 2000. But Democratic leaders replied that priority must go to needs on Earth. By United Press International. Initial reaction to President Nixon's granting of a holiday Monday to federal employees so that they could observe a national day of participation in the Apollo 11 moon landing mission mostly was one of surprise. Hempstead, New York. Joe Namath officially reported to the New York Jets training camp at Hofstra University Wednesday following a closed-door meeting with his teammates over his differences with pro football commissioner Peter Roselli. Over. Roger. Thank you, Bruce. And so the day begins with the news of the day being read to men who are making history. It's now 34 hours after liftoff. We're waiting for a television transmission. Oh, Apollo 11, Houston, we got the network all configured for the TV. You can uh, start any time you want, over. OK, 11, we have a picture. We see the Earth right in the center of the screen, over. Hi, Roger, Houston, Apollo 11. Calling in from about 130,000 miles out. And uh, we'll zoom our camera in slowly uh, to get the most magnification we can. Uh, over. Roger. This view is coming to us from about 129,000 nautical miles. Eleven, Houston, uh, the, uh, the definition is uh, pretty good on our monitor here. The color is not too... Uh, varsity, at, l at least on this set, uh, could you describe what you're uh, looking at, over? Roger, you're seeing Earth as uh, we see it at uh, our left-hand window, just a little more than a half Earth. Uh, we're looking at uh, the eastern Pacific Ocean, and the north half of the top half of the screen, uh, we can see uh, North America, Alaska, United States, Canada, Mexico, and Central America. Uh, 11, uh, Houston, uh, if you could uh, comply, we'd uh, like to see uh, some smiling faces up there. If you could give us some interior views, I'm sure everybody would like to uh, see you over. 
Okay, we'll uh, reconfigure the PD for that. Roger. Ah, uh, now we're coming in. Uh, can't quite make out who that had. Uh, it's Big Mike Collins there. Well, you got a little bit of... Yeah, hello there, sports fans. You got a little bit of me, plus Neil's in the center couch, and Buzz is doing the camera work this time. Is uh, Buzz holding your cue cards for you over? Cue cards have a no. We have, we have no intention of competing with the professionals, believe me. Uh, 11, Houston, Houston, we just lost our pick. I uh, see we're going back outside now. Over. Uh, 11, Houston, you copy? Over. Roger, right, we copy. And, uh, as uh, we pan back out to uh, the distance at which we see the Earth, we'll have Apollo 11 signing off. Day 3, July 18th. Apollo 11, this is Houston. Over. Go ahead, Houston. Uh, Roger, I've got the morning news here, if you're interested, over. Yeah, we sure are. We're ready to copy and comment. That's just 30 there? Uh, Roger. Okay, here we go. The interest in the flight of Apollo 11 continues at a high level, but a competing interest in the Houston area is the easing of watering rules. Mayor Louis Welch promises the lifting of lawn watering restrictions if the rains continue. Friday is partly cloudy and there is a 30% chance of thunder showers in the afternoon. In sports, the Houston Oilers are showing plenty of enthusiasm in their early preseason workouts at Kerrville, and Coach Wally Lamb says he is impressed with the fine group of rookies. And in Corby, England, an Irishman, John Coyle, has won the World Porridge Eating Championship by consuming 23 bowls of instant oatmeal in a 10-minute time limit from a field of 35 other competitors. Over. I'd like to enter Aldrin in the oatmeal eating contest next time. See pretty good at that. He's doing his chair up here. 55 hours and 35 minutes into the mission. The astronauts are preparing to go into the LEM. The event is being televised back to Earth. Lemon Houston, we're really amazed at the quality of the picture up in the tunnel. It's uh, really superb, over. It is considering the amount of light up in there. Roger, we're about to open our hatch now. Right. There's that same guy that when you open up the door, well, he's waiting there for you and he turns the lights on. How about that? It's like the refrigerator. That conversation between Charlie Duke and uh, Mike Collins referring to the automatic light that comes on in the uh, lem when the hatch is opened. 11 Houston, uh, uh, bus he already in? Over. All right, I'm halfway in. I'm going to start turning around, I guess. Buzz Aldrin reporting that he's halfway into the uh, LEM. Uh, this view is inside the LEM cabin. We had a view, uh, Buzz, of the utility light cord. Now, let me show you a view looking the other way. Right. And we see uh, right now a uh, utility light or either a uh, floodlight uh, up there. But I think now I see the uh, utility light still in the storage bag. Hey, that's a great shot right there. We see you in there. I guess that's uh, Neil and Mike. Better be, anyway. And uh, we're going to turn our TV monitor off now uh, for a short bit while we have some other work to do. Uh, Apollo 11 signing off. The crew is bedded down for the night. And here's an announcement from Mission Control. This is Apollo Control at 61 hours, 39 minutes. Uh, we've had no further conversation with the crew uh, since our last uh, report. Uh, flight surgeon uh, says there is no indication at this time that they have uh, begun to sleep, but uh, we expect they'll be uh, getting to sleep here shortly. Coming up in uh, less than uh, 10 seconds now, we'll be uh, crossing into the sphere of influence of the moon, a computational uh, changeover will be made here in mission control. At this point, as the uh, moon's gravitational force becomes the uh, dominant effect on the spacecraft trajectory, and our displays will shift from Earth reference to moon reference. At uh, 61 hours, 41 minutes, this is Apollo Control, Houston. Day four in the flight log of Apollo 11, July 19th. The crew is observing the moon. The view of the moon that uh, we've been having recently is really spectacular. It uh, fills about uh, three quarters of the hatch window, and of course we can see the entire circumference, even though part of it is uh, in complete shadow and part of it's in Earth giant. It's a view worth the price of the trip. Well, there are a lot of us down here that uh, would be willing to come along. That was Neil Armstrong.
while the spacecraft was out of contact on the far side of the moon. We're waiting now for the signal to be reacquired at the Madrid, Spain tracking station as it comes around. Madrid AOS. Madrid AOS. Telemetry indicates that the crew is working on the antenna angles to uh, bring the high gain antenna to bear. Apollo 11, Apollo 11. This is Houston. How do you read? Green, you're loud and clear, Houston. How are you? Roger, you're reading you the same now. Uh, could you repeat your burn status report? It was like perfect. Roger. And uh, the spacecraft is looking good to us on telemetry. Okay, everything looks good up here. Apollo 11 is in lunar orbit, an elliptical orbit. A second burn will bring it down into a near circular one, about 60 miles above the surface. We're waiting for the crew to report the status of that second burn. Apollo 11, Houston, we're standing by. Over. BGY minus point zero. VGZ minus 0.1, Delta VC minus 5.2, Fuel 362, Ox 364, Unbalanced plus 50. And our post burn now 94s, 66.1 by 54.4. Go ahead. Roger, copy the burn report. Sounds good. Uh, you heard that report uh, from Commander Neil Armstrong indicating uh, that uh, LOI-2 was all came off almost precisely as planned. Uh, this is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 87 hours uh, 31 minutes, uh, now under the flight Apollo 11. The Apollo 11 uh, spacecraft uh, continues on its uh, front side uh, pass above the moon. We're now less than uh, 10 minutes away from a uh, loss of signal. The uh, Apollo 11 crew and uh, currently in their rest period. We've uh, received uh, no indication yet uh, that any of the three uh, crew members uh, are actually sleeping, uh, although all three appear to be in a, a very restful mode. Uh, this will be the final sleep period uh, for the crew. Now at the threshold of their uh, prime mission objective, the final sleep period uh, uh, prior to landing on the lunar surface and uh, returning. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Day number five, July 20, 1969. The big day. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin are aboard the lunar module, which they have codenamed Eagle. Mike Collins is alone in the command and service module, codenamed Columbia. Hello, Eagle Houston, we're standing by, over. Eagle Houston, we see you on the steerable, over. Roger, Eagle, I'm got. Roger, how does it look? The Eagle, Eagle has wings. Roger. Looking good. Think you got a fine looking flying machine there, Eagle, despite the fact you're upside down. Somebody's upside down. The two spacecraft are flying in formation. Once around the moon, an Eagle, with Armstrong and Aldrin aboard, fires its engine to start the descent. Communication is re-established as they come out from behind the moon. Columbia, Houston, over. Houston, Columbia, reading you loud and clear. How many? Roger, bye-bye, Mike. Uh, how did it go, over? Listen, babe, everything's going just swimmingly. Beautiful. Great. We're standing by for Eagle. Okay, he's coming along. We have acquisition of signal from the LEM. Houston, Eagle, how do you read? Bye-bye, Eagle. We're standing by for your burn report, over. Roger, the burn was on time. Residuals minus 0.1, minus 0.2, minus 0.7, and we use the things now 86 for delta VZ, which is 9.5, versus yours, which is 9.1, and I believe that may explain the difference. Uh, apogee uh, 57.2, uh, Paraloon uh, 9.1, Sun check uh, the three marks, noun 20 minus noun 22 plus. 0.19 plus 0.16 plus 0.11. Over. Right, copy. Looks great. Guidance says we're a go. Now 12 minutes 54 seconds to ignition. Gene Kranz just advised his flight controllers we're off to a good start. Play it cool. The final descent. Eagle, Houston, you're a go. Did that take it all at uh, four minutes? 
Roger, you're a go to con you're a go to continue power descent. You're a go to continue power descent. Roger. Altitude 40,000. At the earth, right out our front window. Houston, you're looking at our Delta H. Uh, that's affirmative. Program alarm. Looking good to us, over. 1202. Good radar data. Altitude now 33,500 feet. Give us a reading on the 1202 program alarm. Roger, we got you. We're going at alarm. Throttle down. on time. Roger, copy it, throttle down. Throttle down. Set him in the simulator. Roger. Action things look real close. Altitude now 21,000 feet, still looking very good. Velocity down now to 1,200 feet per second. You're looking great to us, Eagle. Altitude 13,005. Velocity 9,100 feet per second. Made it uh, switch over time, please, you. Roger, stand by. You're looking great at eight minutes. Yeah, correction on that velocity, now reading 760 feet per second. Eagle, you're looking great. Coming up nine minutes. We're now in the approach phase. Everything looking good. Altitude 5,200 feet. Manual attitude control is good. Roger, copy. Altitude 4200. Houston, you're a go for landing, over. Roger, understand. Go for landing. 3,000 feet. Copy. Alarm. 1201. 1201. Roger, 1201 alarm. We're go. Same type. We're go. 2,000 feet. 2,000 feet. Into the ag. 47 degrees. Roger. 47 degrees. Eagle looking great, your go. Altitude 1600. 1400 feet, still looking very good. Roger, 1202, we copy it. 35 degrees. 35 degrees, 750, coming down to 23. 700 feet, 21 down, 33 degrees. 100 feet down at 19. 540 feet down at 30, down at 15. 400 feet down at 9. Gate forward. 150 feet down at 4. 30, rip the half down. They're, uh, Take on uh, horizontal velocity. 300 feet down, three and a half. 47 forward. Put up. On one and a one and a half down. 70. Eight. Epic shadow out there. 50 down at two and a half. 19 forward. Altitude, velocity, light, three and a half down, 220 feet, 13 forward, 11 forward, coming down nicely, 200 feet, four and a half down, five and a half down, 160 feet, six and a half down, five and a half down, nine forward, good, 120 feet. 100 feet, three and a half down, nine forward, five percent. 185. Okay, 75 feet, guys looking good, down a half. Six forward. 60 seconds. Lights on, six. Down two and a half. Forward, forward. 30 feet down, two and a half, picking up some dust. 30 feet, two and a half down, great shadow. Four forward, four forward, drift into the right a little. 30, down and a half. 30 seconds. Forward, just, good. Okay. Contact light. Okay, engine stop. APA at a descent. Boat control, both auto, decent engine command, override off. Engine arm off. 413 is in. We copy you down, Eagle. Houston, uh, 
Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Roger, Twink. Tranquility, we copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. Thank you. 102 hours, 45 minutes, and 45 seconds. And mark well the date. July 20, 1969, man is on the moon. Eagle has landed.